This is the first video in a mini-series of our Scotland adventure, including the NC500. I hope you like the intro. Hello YouTube and welcome back to another video. Sorry if I sound a bit funny, I've got a cold at the moment. This is a mini-series about our Scotland adventure in our caterums, which included the NC500 and more of Scotland. If you don't want to miss a video, make sure that you are subscribed so you will see the next one. Where to begin? Well, I've wanted to do the NC500 for a while now. For those of you who don't know, the NC500 is a 516 mile trip around the north of Scotland, which has lots of things to do on the way, including some amazing views and great roads. If you are new to the channel, then I use my caterum as my daily. She is called Fern, and she will never be a garage queen. There are lots of reasons for ownership, which is a video in itself, but a big part of that is making memories with the car. And, well, this is going to be a great memory. I'm very lucky to have made lots of friends through caterum ownership, including one of my best friends. I can't take any credit for the planning of the trip, and he did all of it, including booking the accommodation. There are lots of different ways to do the NC500, but I knew that for me to be able to do the trip, there would have to be a fair bit of camping to keep the costs down. I've not done camping since I was in the Cubs, I think, which meant that I had a lot of things to buy and to start preparing for. The main thing being a tent that was big enough to get all my things in. I knew that there was a high probability that it would it would rain at some point during the 10 day trip, which could actually be every day. I set a target to be able to put my tent up in under 20 minutes. This was because if it was raining, I wanted to be able to get my tent up before all of my stuff got wet. Caterums are more practical than you might think, but they aren't the best at keeping things dry, really. One of the best things that I bought to complement my tent was this chair as I could sit inside my tent. It wasn't the smallest chair when it was packed away, but it was a small price to pay, I thought. After putting my tent up and down a few times to reach my goal, I also sprayed it with this spray that was recommended online to keep the midges away. I did get bit in by midges a fair bit though, even though I used smidge. I do think that this spray worked though, because I didn't see any midges inside my tent. I think I must be tasty, as I always seem to get bitten by stuff, so I wasn't surprised to get midge bites at the end of the trip. Unfortunately, I had a coolant leak just before the trip, which wasn't ideal. I thought I found the leak a few times, but I didn't, and then time was ticking away. I try to do as much maintenance as I can on Fern, but I'm just an amateur, learning with each job that I do. Luckily, Premier Power managed to fit me in and fix the problem just before we went. I just wanted to say a big thanks to Premier Power for fixing Fern for this trip, or it might not have happened. I got Fern back the day before that we left for Scotland. This meant that I didn't have that much time to pack the car. Space was at a premium in the car and I managed to get her packed at 2am in the morning of the Saturday that we actually left for Scotland. I thought that I'd been very good at making use of the space in the car, which included this e-bag. Even though I managed to fit a lot in Fern, this was also my biggest problem. I didn't leave myself any free space in the car. This meant that whenever I packed the car up after camping, everything had to be in its place. I did some bad packing as well, like having the tent poles at the bottom of the passenger footwell. This wasn't good as it was one of the last things to get taken down, but one of the first things that needed packing in the car. This is fine on a sunny day, but not ideal when you're packing up in the rain. This is all good experience though, and I learned a lot of what not to do as well as what I should be doing. I'm sure that I will be better prepared for our next trips. I will talk more about what I took with me in a later video. Well, the last video actually in this mini-series. I will also include what I took but I didn't use on the trip. I think that's enough talk about the preparation and the first day was going to be a long one. As I wanted to remember this trip, I made sure that I wrote a page in a notebook each day and also took a photo of Fern's mileage at the beginning and end of each day. Here is a picture of the speedo showing the mileage just before we left. We could have split the journey up more on the way but the main part of the trip was to drive the Scottish roads. We thought that the best thing to do was to drive up to Scotland in one day. This meant going on motorways, which can also not be a nice thing in caterums. One of the biggest things is not being seen by other road users. 
I don't ride a motorbike, but I would think it's a similar mindset. You're always looking out for someone that hasn't seen you. If you haven't seen it already, take a look at my crash video when someone didn't see me at a roundabout. We had the mindset just to get up to Scotland, but Jason and I have done loads of road trips together. Luckily, we are used to doing a lot of miles in our cars, so this didn't really worry us. We also have headsets connected to radio so we can talk to each other when one of us wanted a break, for instance. There was one stop on the way that we wanted to do, which was to drop into Turn 7 and see Callum. Turn 7 is a newish Caterham dealer, and they also have a YouTube channel, which has some great videos on it. If you haven't seen that already, then go check them out. Callum is a lovely chap, and it was nice meeting him and some different owners on the day. We stopped here for about two hours in the end, and then two cups of tea later, and also getting a Turn 7 keyring, we were back on the road. I've done lots of miles in third, and I average about 6,000 miles a year in my three-year ownership so far. As I knew this trip was going to be around 2,000 miles, I upped my mileage on my insurance for another 2,000, and that ended up being a good idea, otherwise I would have gone over. When we crossed the border to Scotland, we found this lay-by, which was a nice place to stop for a few minutes. I wasn't really expecting any good roads on our first day, but when we got into Scotland, we had some good roads straight away. It was quite a long drive to do in one day, but we were staying at a bed and breakfast on the first night, so we knew we would be able to have a good night's sleep. There were some great roads just before we got to the bed and breakfast. I'll leave a link to where we stayed in the description below. I'm sure lots of caterer owners would like to do this trip, but there are many reasons to put off a trip like this. It could be time, money, not wanting to put miles on the car, or worrying about breakdowns. There are lots of reasons to say no. I used to worry loads when I was younger, but in the last few years I've tried not to worry so much. It's very easy to worry about things so much that you don't end up doing the things that you want to do. What I'm trying to say is, if you want to do a trip like this, then just do it. Life's too short. You'll see how we get on in the next few videos, and we had a brilliant time, as you will definitely see. Here we are, arriving at the bed and breakfast. It was a long day, and I was really looking forward to a good night's sleep. As this is going to be a mini-series, I will leave you here, in this video, ready for day two. And I can tell you, day two has some absolutely cracking roads in it. So, we have arrived in Scotland, and the trip is just beginning. We end up driving some amazing roads in all different kinds of weathers. It's been one of the best things that I've done so far with Fern, so make sure that you are subscribed so you don't miss the next video. Sorry for my croaky voice due to my cold. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one.